It's how we roll and we're f***ing back. We're back. We are in Lanzarote, in the sunshine. I've kind of got a tan now, hopefully you can see it. Have you? Oh. We are here in quite beautiful Lanzarote to have our fitness and training camp. Like we've been one week here in Lanzarote and it's just been insane. Like I love being here with everyone. Two and a half K down, 97.5 to go. We went to Lanzarote at the start of the year, basically to get everyone's fitness up um, and to get everyone together, build the team vibes. Time to go surfing. Go again. <laughs> we learnt a lot in 2022 and we're heading into a 2023 we're incredibly excited about and there's a lot of changes that have happened and things that we've done to kind of make sure 2023 can be our year. First big change is of course our new elite male Olizoir. The main difference for me in 2023 is obviously going to a factory team. Last year I was on a small budget team, managed to do pretty good and now have an opportunity with FMD Racing. Yeah, getting rid of Dennis was, it was always going to be a tough one. That one spot does currently need to be filled by a, a rider that's going to give us a top 20 to 30 result, and if not better. And I saw the potential in Oliver Zoir. I'm really excited to have someone who's, you know, in the same way, I think, gone from the ground up. And just have someone on like the same wavelength as me and I can almost relax a little bit and focus on my racing. And, and I think just having someone that I can look up to in, within the team and learn a lot from will, is super exciting for me. I felt he could also bring some stability to the team. He's got a mature head on him, I've noticed that in his racing and I felt as though he could help the younger ones, which is obviously now Rudy and, and Phoebe, but also with Tane, take a bit of weight off her shoulder as the, as the only elite on the team. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> if I was just to describe Oli Zouar in one sentence, it would be, now I only need one word, special. Everything he says is funny, it's a cheat code. Pretty big step for FMD, because even though we've had some elite riders before, and like myself, we've always been in juniors before, and then we've gone up to elite because my dad's trusted us. Now we've signed this incredible rider who had some really good results last year. Yeah, it's just real big for us, I think. We had a four hour plane together, and I chewed his ear off for like four hours, and he spoke back, so it was all good. How it goes, he's like fitted in super well already. I think it's so obvious when someone fits in so well because you kind of feel like they've been there for ages. It doesn't feel like not normal. It just feels like he could have been there for a few years kind of thing. He's, he's done a bit of racing by himself. He's run the team by himself um, and he understands what goes into it. I've been working my whole life to be in a position like this and haven't really had the normal progression from juniors up to elite. With going to a factory team, there's a bit more added pressure. and um, Not that I feel like there is, but you kind of put, put it on yourself. This was always just a dream for me, so to be actually in this position, just want to make the most of it and enjoy it. What I'm least looking forward to is that little fella over there. The rooster. He reminds me of one of those little Jack Russells that's just 
way too aggressive. Once you put him back in his place, he's well behaved for a bit, but he's all right. He's got a lot of growing to do, physically and mentally. What are you saying? I'm the rooster, as Ollie's Zwar calls me. I'm going into first year juniors, riding for FMD. My name is Rudy Icon. I'm 16 years old, and I wash plates and ride bikes. Well, I've known Rudy for so long, and he's been on the He's been on the team for ages, just as like a little kid, so that's what I see him as. He's got, I don't know, he's quite natural on the bike. He's just always had fun on his bike and he's always looked fast, like he's always, and he is fast. Well, I'm finally racing World Cups after all these years and not doing English races, which I'm stoked about. Rudy, Rudy's extremely young as a junior and he's got to learn. He's, he's been good, but I do believe he's going to take his time to actually find his feet within junior racing um, and we're going to support him all the way. He's a fast bike rider, he's a great person and has got some really good results at like local and, and national races. He's really coming out of his shell now as well, it's quite funny to see the relationship between him and Ollie. He's a little road man as well so that's going to be sick. <laughs> if, I, if an Aussie was to describe someone from UK, it'd be Rudy. I'm going to climb that tree. So you can't climb that tree? No, I can't climb that tree. So he's just a little fireball, isn't he? A little ginger fireball, <laughs> bless him. And now he's sunburnt to a crib, so... It's the camera. <laughs> I guess naturally it's hard to give myself a goal because of what I experienced last year. At this, at this time, I'm still really, really scared because I haven't gone up to speed yet. I haven't tried to go fast. And the thought of going to a World Cup track alongside the world's best and the world's fastest and those that have trained and they're ready to be here that is scary. It's scary having to put myself in that bunch of people. I don't know if I can be competitive again. I want to be, and like I think deep down I hope that I can be. I have to also accept that maybe I'm not gonna be, and maybe I won't ever be again. So those feelings are hard to deal with, but again, those are things that I'm working on. I'm scared of crashing again, 100%. I'm so, so scared of falling on my head again, like what will happen if I hit my head again? That's not a nice thought, but I've worked really hard and I have got the tools to manage these emotions and I'm not gonna push beyond what I know I'm capable of. That's not why I'm here. I'm not as anxious as I was. Still three months ago, I was experiencing a lot of but I've had like therapy and I've seen psychologists and psychiatrists and that's something I've worked really, really hard on. I do think I'm going to have new challenges, like big challenges when I get to the races because obviously that's what I'm aiming to do. But I've just got no pressure on myself and to feel a certain way or to act a certain way or to do certain things. I just want to, this is part of my recovery and I, I, like, I want to prove to myself that I'm better. So my sister's back, so T's back, and I'm so happy. Like she's finally feeling herself. She's back to be, like she's riding a bit, like more and more. She's back to training. She's been insane this week with us, and like it's just sick to hear. Like we were in the gym the other day, and our coach Chris said something. Like, I can't remember what, and she just turned around and said, "Nah, I got a race to win," without thinking. And then she was like, "Oh no way! I still think that." So. Yeah, she's still hungry for it and yeah, she's always been insane on the bike, so I think she'll be back to where she belongs. 
Having Tani back in the pits and back on a bike is going to be massive for the team. To have Tani there as the kind of, you know, um, this pinnacle member, an important member of the team is, is so important. It's all credit to Tani. It's all credit to that, that mental state that she's been able to kind of build around what she's gone through and in a way become kind of a better Tani in herself. Tani is now in a good place, which is nice to see. She's not just a shell of a human anymore. She's out and about and happy and competitive and ready for racing and getting at it. She's throwing herself around more. She's keen to get back on the bike. Yeah, well obviously I've only had a back seat into how last year went. Um, and I feel, I feel like she's come a long way. And like for example, we went for a 100K road ride yesterday and she felt really strong towards the end. And I feel like for her, it's all these small little steps that are just little wins and little ticks and it's just building up her confidence more and more. I'm so excited for us. I literally, I keep saying to her day, I was like, remember when, remember when we went to Sladman and you couldn't even walk from my house to the gondola? We couldn't do that, we couldn't do a five minute walk. You know, we were, yesterday or the day before we did the 100k ride together. Every now and again I just stop and like, no, that's too crazy. Considering how much, how little she's ridden, I think she thinks she's got a lot to work on. I think mentally she's way happier though now, so much happier. I'm keen to just get racing again, really, and I think prove to myself and my brain that um, we can do scary things. <laughs> Downhill mountain biking, explained in the simplest possible way, is the highest level of competitive mountain bike racing, where the world's best downhill athletes compete against the clock from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill, and it's the quickest time wins. Throughout the downhill circuit, you will see some of the most technical, advanced, extreme and demanding tracks out there. These guys aren't taking on your everyday mountain bike trails. They'll encounter some of the steepest sections ever. They'll tackle man-made sections. They'll tackle loose, natural sections. They'll tackle rocks. They'll tackle roots, tabletop jumps, gap jumps, drops, turns, everything you could possibly entail and throw it onto a mountain bike track these guys take on. And that's why it's the highest level of downhill racing. I truly believe that down and mountain biking is up there with one of the most dangerous action sports um, in the scene. It's brutal. What these athletes' bodies go through week in, week out is, is full on. I feel like every time I do a full run at the moment, I crash. Crashing is a part of mountain biking. That's, you know, it comes as a package deal. It's just a part of what these athletes go through. <laughs> If you're going to hurtle down the hill at 30, 40, 50, 60 k's, yeah, every now and again things are going to go wrong and you do everything you can to avoid that. Anything can happen and when it goes wrong, it can go horribly wrong. And Every single race weekend we see injuries, crashes and gnarly situations. Um, and that's just a part of mountain biking, but it's uh, fucking fun. <laughs>yeah, she had an insane couple of years in junior and now she's stepping up. She's going to be racing against Tane. I'm pretty excited to see how that goes. Like how, like, because they're such good friends and they're such like little 
big sister and little sister and it's going to be insane to see them ride and race together and yeah I think she's going to have a good year. I've always said that I think big things of her and yeah. The Tani and Phoebe relationship and bond um, is just becoming so <laughs> unbelievably strong. What that means is they've really in a way taken each other under the wing even though Tani's obviously the big sister and really kind of helping Phoebe out there's a there's a way that they really look after each other now which is 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 wonderful to see. Yeah, I think she's more than capable of you know getting top tens, podiums, whatever but like we've said before it's, it's a big mental game so there's a lot to learn along the way and I just think it's going to be sick racing together. So uh, no, I'm so stoked, so stoked. We're in a good place to go and smash some racing so I'm well happy, yeah. I'm most excited about being at all the World Cups with the team, spending time with everyone and just riding bikes. For me, I'm most excited about be just the support um, that you get on a daily basis or at, at a race, the support you get. It's something I've been lacking the last few years, so I'm really excited just to have that. It's going to be a good start to 2023. Nah, I'm not going to say that because I said it last time and it was bad. <laughs> that was good though. Cut that, cut that. I guess it's time to go racing. this far you know this is how we roll and we have this sick bike that you can win so this is a full FMD spec Canyon Torque size medium and obviously in pink to enter all you've got to do is follow the instructions in the description or check out the Canyon Collective and FMD Instagram good luck in the meantime I'm gonna keep her safe <laughs>